Today's review is for Eternals, a new Marvel Cinematic Universe movie directed by Chloe Zhao and stars Gemma Chan, Richard Madden, Camille Nanjati, Angelina Jolie, Madame Siok, Barry Keoghan, Liam McHugh, Brian Tyree Henry, Don Lee, Salma Hayek, and Kit Harrington. And tells the story of the Eternals, a group of immortal superpowered beings named after historical figures in mythology who are basically the original, original superheroes of the Marvel Universe. Like, they've been here for like centuries, before the Avengers, even Captain America, and they've been in hiding ever since. And they were sent to Earth centuries ago by the ancient Celestials to wipe out a race of monsters on the planet called Deviants. And the main story picks up in present day, specifically after Endgame when Hulk snapped, with the titular Eternals having to reunite and save the planet once again when they discover that the Deviants have somehow returned after they were supposedly wiped out centuries ago. But they soon discover that the gravity of this mission of theirs is more complicated than they expected. Now, when I first heard about this movie being made, even before it was like officially announced at Comic-Con, I wasn't exactly like that hyped about it because like I never heard of the Eternals before. So like while I wasn't against it, why would I be against them making a movie based on something I've never heard of? That would be stupid. But I mean, I wasn't excited either. I mean, I was a little interested, interested enough that I even made a poster for it. But you know, I wasn't excited. Like, ooh, buddy, I can't wait. <laughs> you know, but like, you know, I wasn't hyped, even though the cast they got was pretty good. And okay, I guess one pretty exciting thing was that they were going to use this film to set up Black Knight for the MCU with Kit Harrington as Dane Whitman, which yeah, fuck it. That's a great casting. But even with all that, before trailers started coming out, I wasn't excited. But, I will say, when the trailers started coming out, they got me much more invested. Because the trailers, they were just amazing. Like, what they showed in the trailers, from the visuals of the film, the cinematography, and also just the music in the trailers, especially in the final trailer, all of that was incredible. And it definitely got me a little bit more excited into seeing this movie. And now I just got back from seeing the movie, and... Yeah, I liked it. I mean, would I say it was necessarily as fantastic or remarkable or grand as we all kind of built up in our heads? No, no, not, not really. It does have a few issues, but for the most part, I think Eternals is a solid film that introduces some cool new characters for the MCU and also differentiates itself from the other MCU movies in ways that I think benefit the story as it just focuses less on setup and more on just its own story and characters. Characters whom I found myself really liking in the end, like Cersei played by Gemma Chan, who is kind of the main character of the movie. She has some really cool matter manipulating powers where she can turn dirt into water, stone into ice, an entire bus into rose petals, and she shares a really strong connection to humans. And she was pretty good as a female lead. Like it was really cool seeing how she becomes an even stronger and greater Eternal than she ever was before. And to see what great lengths she was willing to go in order to save our planet to which she has come to call her home. And I did root for her in the final battle. Gemma Chan did a great job playing her and I do look forward to seeing her again in the future of the Marvel Universe. I also liked Kingo, played by Camille Nunjati. He's the more humorous member of the group, and he's pretty good as a mix of comic relief and badassery at the same time. In some instances, coming off like a Johnny Cage inspired character. Like, the way he uses his powers is pretty cool. Like, he can shoot cosmic energy out of his fingers, and he does it like he's shooting guns at the Deviants, and it's pretty badass and cool. But he also gives off some of the funniest jokes of the movie. For example, the way he's been living among the humans in secret is that he's a Bollywood star and he's acted for generations. And the explanation he's come up with for why he doesn't seem to age to those who don't know he's an immortal being is that he's actually the current descendant of a family tree of Bollywood actors. Like he claims that any previous performance of himself in a movie from the 1930s or 1960s is his great grandfather, grandfather, or father. Like, his cover-up is that he's part of a generation of Bollywood stars. And it's actually pretty hilarious. But yeah, Kingo's fun. I like him. I also really liked Makari, played by Lauren Ridloff. The first deaf character in the MCU, who I liked even more than I expected to. 
As the Eternal with the least amount of character exposition, she's still able to convey Makari's character and her motivations with just the expressions of her face and the movement of her body in and out of action. And it really is quite a performance. And not only that, but she was also a fucking badass. Like in the final battle, she has this epic fight with one character where she just runs with her speed powers. She's a speedster, by the way. She can run really fast like the Flash. And she keeps punching this villain right into the side of a mountain. And it's just fucking incredible. And it definitely made her one of my new favorite comic book movie speedsters. But my favorite performance in the whole movie was Richard Madden as Icarus. Who, yeah, in the movie is similar in ways to Superman. He can fly, he has great strength, and of course he can shoot lasers out of his eyes. Hell, one character in the movie even mistakes him for Superman. So they kind of knew what they were doing there. But just because he's similar to Superman doesn't mean he isn't also a badass motherfucker. He has this incredibly stoic personality, like whenever you try to make some fun talk with him, like say, hi there, to him, and he'll just give you the stare and just go, hello. <laughs> like, he doesn't care who you are. And on paper, that could be seen as bad acting. But with Icarus, it works, because it just shows that he's the least attached to Earth, and it makes him kind of the most strong-willed one of the group. But also, yeah, he's a total badass with his Superman-like abilities. Any scene where he shoots his laser eyes at a Deviant, or rips the arms off of a Deviant, is just so awesome and cool. And it just makes him so dang awesome! Richard Madden does a great job playing him, and it was easily my favorite performance of the movie. But yeah, pretty much all of the Eternals I liked. They have some great chemistry together, and it actually does get pretty sad whenever something bad happens between them, and it really did make them feel like this big family of immortals, and I can't wait to see more of their chemistry between them in the next two installments of this trilogy. Another thing I love about this movie is the cinematography. Like seriously, this is easily Marvel's most beautifully shot movie yet. Like, there are so many shots in this movie, in certain scenes, that would be perfect as paintings in a museum. Like, literally the first shot of the movie is the Eternal ship flying past a sun, and it's just amazing. There are also some epic shots whenever a character talks to the Celestial Arishim. Sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. And a lot of these shots are just so cool, as it just shows the scale of Arishim's face, and how small the Eternal is in comparison. And it just shows the actual scale of the Celestials. And it actually makes them fucking terrifying. Like seriously, these guys are far, far bigger than you'd expect. There's even a pretty ominous shot of a Deviant peeking its head out of a water at a dock at night. We get some really spectacular shots during action sequences. L like seriously, this film all the way through is just gorgeous. And I have to give serious props to director of photography Ben Davis. He did a fantastic job shooting this. The action, of course, is also spectacular. Any sequence from a fight on an island shore, or a battle in a forest village, or a standoff in a volcano is just fantastic. My favorite fight in the whole movie was easily the final battle, which I won't spoil what happens, but trust me when I tell you that this entire final battle was just incredible. Like the way it's all shot, the effects of it, the music in the scenes, and seriously for a moment I actually almost felt like it was a fight that they were going to lose. Like seriously, this fight actually does get intense to a point where you almost think that they might actually lose this somehow. Like seriously, the action in this movie is just so good. And I especially loved the score for this movie. Which of course mostly consisted of Raman Jawadi's score. And his score for this movie is definitely one of the best Marvel scores I've heard in a while. It's just so majestic and powerful, and it just gets you super pumped whenever you hear it. Like seriously, it's just as great as the Game of Thrones score, and it works so well in every single scene. It's just marvelous. But funny enough, my favorite piece of music in this movie isn't even part of Raman's score, as amazing as the score is. But it was actually this original song that was made for the movie. It's the song that Kingo and his fellow dancers are performing to in the Bollywood sequence. It's called Notch Meta Hero by Celine Sharma. And when I first heard this song come on in this sequence in the theater, I actually started dancing in my seat to it. Don't worry, not enough to disturb the audience in the movie theater. Just enough so I can dance my head and shoulders to it. Like, you know? Because it really is a catchy song. In fact, when I got home from the movie, I then looked for the song online, and when I finally found it, 
I just started fully dancing to it. Like, for real, this song is just really fucking good. And I will actually leave a description to the song in the description below so you can listen to it for yourself. And yeah, big props to Selena Sharma for making this amazing song. Like, I must say, for my first time hearing any of her music, she has a really fantastic singing voice. But yeah, the music in this movie is definitely some of the best Marvel music I've ever heard. It's amazing. But now let me get into what I didn't like about the film. And no, don't worry, none of my issues are gonna be about how offended I am that this film is very diverse. Like to any woman, black person, gay person, or non-binary person, etc, etc, who follows me on any of my social media, don't worry. You shouldn't expect any of that bullshit from me. I'm not one of those get woke, go broke, anti-SJW incel YouTubers that do nothing but try to make diversity in media look bad in order to get more clicks. Any issues I talk about in this film are only about the film story-wise, character-wise, etc. You get the idea. In fact, I only really have like three big problems with the movie, and I'm gonna get into them now. The first issue I have is that the first half of the film does kind of feel like a bit of a drag. Like, there isn't that much narrative focus just yet, it jumped around quite a bit, and it was really exposition heavy. And that can make the first half of the movie a little bit boring. Not that they shouldn't have a, a less fast pace than usual, I just feel like that they could have somehow shortened the first half a little bit and still try to convey the exact same story all the way through somehow. That's just me. Another issue with this movie is that it was kind of confusing as to who exactly the main villain was. Now, by the marketing, you'd assume that the main villain is this deviant named Crow, voiced by Bill Skarsgård. And in the film, at first, it almost seems like that's the case. However, there is a big twist in the film that gives us another antagonist. And I will not spoil who this villain is because it's the biggest twist of the movie. But I will say, out of the two villains, I liked the twist villain more because they felt better motivated and at times were more scarier than Crow. Like Crow, I mean, he's not a terrible villain, he's kinda cool, but he still falls into the category of C-level Marvel villains. But the thing is, I was confused as to who out of these two villains was the main villain. Like, was it Crow or was it the twist villain? Like, at first, Crow is established as the leader of this new deviant attack on Earth and seems to have been the biggest threat at first. But then the twist happens, which gives us the other villain, and the final battle actually focuses mostly on stopping this twist villain. And both villains do show up in the final battle, but they're not working together. They're both against each other as well, as well as the other Eternals being against them too. So, like, who was the main centric antagonist? I mean, I guess it was the twist villain because they're the one the Eternals focus on fighting the most in the final battle. But at the same time, Crow was shown to be the biggest threat at first before the twist happened. But at the same time, Crow was shown to be the biggest threat at first before the twist happened. Like, that was just something I thought was incredibly confusing. And finally, there is actually a bit of a romance between Cersei and Icarus. And... Look, as much as I like Richard Madden and Gemma Chan's performances as these characters and the characters themselves, I honestly feel like that as a couple in this movie, they had no chemistry. Like, from what I've heard, Richard Madden and Gemma Chan were talking so much in interviews about how easy it was to play a couple because they're friends and they had great platonic chemistry. But I personally didn't feel any romantic tension there, to be honest, because it just it didn't feel real enough to me. The only time I kinda maybe felt that love between them was around the end of the movie in the final battle. But that's pretty much it. Other than that, their relationship was really bland in my opinion. And if you ask me, yes, the romances between Druig and Makari and Fastos and his husband, played by Haz Sleeman, were better developed than Cersei and Icarus's romance. But despite all that, I liked Eternals. It was a beautifully made, well acted, excellently shot, visual spectacle of a movie that I just found myself really enjoying. And I do look forward to seeing what they can do with the sequel, as the ending of this movie does actually set up an interesting storyline for the second film, which I can imagine being just as epic as this was. Again, yeah, it's not flawless. The villain side of things can be really confusing. It takes a while for the first half of the movie to get the actual story going. And the romance between Cersei and Icarus is really uninteresting. 
but overall the film was a good time, and it's definitely better than the critics' Rotten Tomato score makes it out to be, and I do recommend it to you if you're looking for a different kind of superhero movie. Although I guess I would mostly recommend it to those who are looking for another chance to see Jon Snow and Rob start together again in something scored by Raman Jawadi. Just saying. I'm going to give Eternals a 7 out of 10. And by the way, do you think the way the Celestials were depicted in this movie would be a good way to also portray Galactus in the MCU? I think I already know the answer, but still, let me know in the comments if you agree. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time, and peace out.